drives and motor applications. By the end of this module, you will get a basic understanding on torque limit, current limit, unstable motor operation, the various trips in the drive, common drives and motor problems, faults and drives, drive electromagnetic compatibility. In this module, we shall learn about the drives and motor applications. But before going in detail, let me introduce you to the main causes for the occurrence of faults, trips and problems in the drive. Excessive loading of the drive may result in warning or tripping on torque limit, over current or inverter time. This is not a concern if the drive is properly sized for the application and intermittent load conditions cause anticipated operation in torque limit or an occasional trip. The parameters that are important in matching the drive to the motor for optimum operation are Parameters 1, 0, 0 and 1, 0, 3 set the mode in which the drive will operate. Parameters 1, 20 through 1, 29 match the drive to the motor and adapt to the motor characteristics. Parameters 4, 16 and 14, 25 set the torque control features of the drive for the application. Parameter 1, 0, 0, configuration sets the drive for open or closed loop operation or torque mode operation. Let's learn in detail the various trips in the drive. There are several different types of trips, like over voltage trips, main phase, loss trips, over current trips, over torque trips, over temperature trips, inverter time trips, etc. The first two trips are the most commonly occurring trip situations. Would you like to have a detailed description on the various trips in the drive? Just click on the icon. Now, Let's see the overvoltage trip in the drive. For 400 volt units, the overvoltage trip level is 840 volt, and for 200 volt units, the level is about half. Prior to the trip, the drive will display a high voltage warning. The warning LED will be turned on, and then it will be illuminated permanently. When the under or over voltage leads to an alarm. The red LED will be flashing and the display will change to the following. Most times, an over voltage condition is due to too fast deceleration ramps with respect to inertia of the load. During deceleration of the load, inertia of the system acts to sustain the running speed. Can we overcome this overvoltage trip? Yes, we can. The overvoltage trips can be overcome by three methods. They are reducing the deceleration rate so it takes longer for the drive to decelerate, allowing the overvoltage control circuit to take care of the deceleration ramp. This can be done by activating the overvoltage control in parameter 2, 17. Install a brake resistor on the unit across DC bus. Next, let's see how main phase loss trips occurs. The drive monitors the phase loss by monitoring the amount of ripple voltage on the DC bus. Ripple voltage on the DC bus is the product of phase loss. The ripple voltage causes overheating in the DC bus capacitors and the DC coils. If left unchecked, the lifetime of the capacitors would be drastically reduced. The phase loss will only be detected if the load is larger than about 30 to 40 percent of full output load of the drive. When the input voltage becomes unbalanced 
or the phase disappears completely, the ripple voltage increases, causes the drive to trip, and issues an alarm for. Now, let's move on to, the common drives, and motor problems. The common drives, and motor problems, occurs due to some error in the control logic, programming, motor or load, internal drive. First, let's have a look at the control logic problems. Control logic problem occurs when the drive does not respond to a given command. There are two basic commands that must be given to any drive in order to obtain an output. First, the drive must be told to run. Secondly, the drive must be told how fast to run. The drives are designed to accept a variety of signals. The best method of locating the control logic problem is by using the status information displayed by the drive. The presence of correct reading indicates that the desired signal is detected by the microprocessor of the drive. If there is not a correct indication, the next step is to determine whether the signal is present at the control terminals of the drive. This can be performed with a voltmeter or oscilloscope. If the signal is present at the terminal, the control card is defective and must be replaced. If the signal is not present, the problem is external to the drive. The circuitry providing the signal along with its associated wiring, must then be checked 